The scientists built a biosphere, a miniature version of our planet, housed in steel and glass. In this mini Eden, they set out to study how living things grow. At first, the experiment seemed a success. Trees grew faster than they did in the wild, but they never matured. They just collapsed under their own weight. What was missing? There was no disease, no lack of water or food. Then it dawned on them. They had shut out the wind. With no wind, a tree dies. These living things grow sturdy only by swaying and bending with each God-created gust of wind. What does God provide for us so that we don't topple and fall, but instead stand strong, our faith rugged and mature as an oak? In his travels, Paul of Tarsus never went a day without some new struggle. He was shipwrecked, he was taken and beaten, he was imprisoned, betrayed. It got so bad that he readied himself for death, which seemed to be waiting for him around the next bend in every road. If Paul thought like something today, he could have been tempted to retreat into himself, into trauma, suffering both a, a physical and a mental collapse, or, or maybe he could have lashed out at those around him who were making his life a misery. These would have been understandable actions. But though he was buffeted in the extreme, Paul's heart didn't break. Why? Because he saw an eternity the other side of his suffering. The storms of his struggles were a passing squall. They were momentary. It was just a light breeze that lasted just a lifetime. They were for this age only never to return again in a million, million centuries. Not one undeserved beating, not one bitter betrayal was wasted. It didn't all happen and disappear into a black hole of pointlessness. In God's grace, these painful experiences created for him glimpses of the sunburst of glory that was to come, which were more real than the world he could see. The shipwrecks, the imprisonments did not weaken him, but forged in him an emboldened faith he called it a daily renewal of his inner person, and it was in the eye of the storm that his faith became resilient. For a tree to be healthy, it has to be buffeted, has to be pushed around so that its load-bearing structure can be stressed to make it strong. It can't survive if it's not tested. When the gale blows cold in our life, we will want to shrink back. We are not the Apostle Paul. And some days, we can't even see ourselves in God's story. We feel imprisoned by our troubled life. We've lost any relationship with our children. Our divorce was more bitter than any shipwreck. We've been beaten to the ground by a failed business venture. We doubt that our faith amounts to much. We've let ourselves and others down so badly so we blame others. We even blame God. The temptation is to turn away. But Paul did not turn away from the wind, but turned to face it. He saw that our troubles have the power, indeed, were designed to strengthen the sinews of our faith so that we do not lose heart. We don't ask for troubles. They aren't a badge of honor. We ask for help and strength when they come. We ask for Jesus to be by our side every day to help us grow strong roots and green leaves, that daily renewal of happiness and hope which sees joy and love and kindness winning each day. It's when we continue to walk with Jesus in the trials of life to trust him that we develop a faith which is durable, unshakable. So praise be to God. Let the wind come. That is why we never give up. Though our bodies are dying, our spirits are being renewed every day. For our present troubles are small and won't last very long, yet they produce for us a glory that vastly outweighs them and will last forever. 
So we don't look at the troubles we can see now. Rather, we fix our gaze on things that cannot be seen. For the things we see now will soon be gone. But the things we cannot see will last forever. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 16 through 18. Thank you.